Uh, welcome back. In this episode I'm going to be assembling the valve chest. I've got the parts ready and the parts we're going to use are the studs and nuts to fix the valve chest to the cylinder, the gasket. I'm going to use the gasket this time because I need to make sure that the valve isn't pressed too tightly against the face. The valve chest, the valve rod, the valve, valve nut, and we have the gland and the stud and the nuts to fix it. And finally we have the valve chest cover. Before we get started this week, I just want to talk a little bit about how the steam chest and the valve is assembled. Here we have the valve chest, inside we have the valve. The valve is operated by the spindle and that's secured to the spindle by the valve nut. The valve shuttles up and down and steam is alternately allowed to go into the cylinder at each end to force the piston both up and then down. There's a recess on the underside of the valve which directs the used steam to the exhaust port. You'll notice that the valve rod is offset away from the cylinder. This is to allow space for the valve underneath the valve rod. First thing we're going to do is to fit the small studs for the gland. The gland goes on like this, closely followed by the two 7BA nuts. Now we take the valve rod and slide it in, but we notice that the valve rod end won't go into the recess in the bottom of the valve chest. Okay, we know it went in when we did the test assembly earlier, so this must be the gland is pulling the rod off true. And again, if we take the gland out, we can see that the valve rod now goes in nicely. Okay, I think this can be fixed fairly easily just by easing these holes a little bit. Um, you can see there's also some burrs on there. I just took the holes out uh, with a drill in a pin vise. Um, the drill was about 0.1 millimeter oversized. So just easing them a tiny fraction. Now we put the gland back on, followed by the gland nuts. Now we can see that it fits quite nicely. Now we take the valve nut and we insert it onto the valve spindle and just spin it on. And we wind it up until it's about halfway up the threads. The actual position will be adjusted later. Now we take the 7BA studs and just screw them into the valve face in the cylinder. Now they're all fitted, we put the gasket on like this. Now before we go any further, we'll take a look at the valve. Now the valve needs to provide a steam tight seal against the valve face on the cylinder. Now this is just a cast face. Although it's a good casting, it's not flat enough to provide a steam tight seal. This is fairly easily resolved. All we need to do is sand the valve smooth. Here I'm using some 180 grit sandpaper which is stuck to a flat aluminium sheet. I finished this off with 280 then 400 grit sandpaper and now we've got a nice smooth surface that will give a good steam tight seal. If we look at the drawing we notice that the 
valve isn't quite square, it's slightly oblong and the long side goes parallel with the valve rod. So it sits on the valve surface in this direction. And we take the steam chest assembly, making sure that we've got the offset in the right direction, and we slide it over the studs, making sure that the valve engages in the valve nut, just like that. And we can see the valve is moving up and down nice and freely now. It'll get even freer when I put a little bit of oil on it. Now the valve cover goes on like this. There is supposed to be a gasket underneath this, but I'm leaving this out for now. And this is just fixed on temporarily with some 7BA nuts. And this is our completed piston and valve assembly and both the valve and the piston rods move nicely. Now we can take the base and we can fit the cylinder and valve assembly. This locates here and is fitted with four 2BA screws. You can see these are fitted with round slot head screws. I don't particularly like these very much. I think a hex headed bolt would look much nicer and be much more in keeping with the model. At some stage in the future I shall replace these. In the next video I'm planning to fit the valve actuating levers. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do all the usual YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, click the bell icon, so on and so forth, and I'll see you next time. Bye. You'll notice that the valve rod is offset away from the cylinder. This is to allow space for the valve to sit on the valve face of the piston cylinder thingy, whatever.